that God gave to us as we pray God answers as we pray for people that we meet and people that people bring our way family people who are sick God continues to do his work God answers prayers and I I'm a testimony of how many growing up, growing up in Brazil in the Pentecostal Church I'm a testimony of how many prayers that I have, I have seen God answer and God continues to do that so uh, as they are looking for I uh, thank you the worship team I understand that for us to have our presentation on PowerPoint the worship team had to sacrifice. be sacrificed so thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice uh, Sometimes I joke, I used to joke with the students in Brazil, I used to teach in a Bible school, and I said to them, remember when Jesus said, you will receive power. I said to them, yes, that Jesus talked about PowerPoint. <laughs> because it looks like this days you cannot do anything with PowerPoint anyway. I was just joking, right? Uh, it's, it's way below what Jesus was saying. Uh, so anyway, I, I want, uh, I'm, I'm going to invite my wife my beautiful wife to give you a little bit of an update about our family. We, the last time we were here, it was June, Father's Day, 2021. And after that, a number of things happened with the family, so I'm gonna ask Lisa to give you a little bit of an update about our family, and then I'll talk about the report of our ministry. Good morning, friends. God's grace and peace with you this morning. You, you triggered me, Nelson. You mentioned the last time we were here in Father's Day, and I remember being in tears most of that um, time that I spoke. Today I'm not going to be in tears. Today is a day of celebration. I have a few minutes to talk about our family, to give an update, and God put on my heart to leave you with a word of encouragement from the Word of God. But I'll tell you, I'm already, I thought I was here to encourage you, and this morning really we have been so encouraged already with um, the testimonies, Lily, George, and there was one more testimony. Tracy. Yes, another testimony that was very powerful and encouraging and Lily's word to say that a fellowship is so important. Um, we need that. We need to encourage one another through testimony in the word of God. So thank you church for encouraging us. Um, for those of you who are newer to the church, you may not know our stories. I'm just going to give you a date. Um, in 2004, we left for Brazil, sent by the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, with our two older children who were five and six at the time. So that was the, that's the context. And today, um, just to give you an update on our family, uh, for those of you who've prayed for our family, who know a bit of our journey, um, we just want to let you know where our children are at. Uh, but in 2004, when we left, God uh, took some of the anxiety in my heart of leaving Canada and heading to Brazil with two young children uh, and, and gave me a word. He promised that the sacrifice that we made, he would honor and that he would fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. And so today, fast forward a number of years, as you can see from the photo, um, I'm here just to give you the testimony of God's faithfulness. Amen. <laughs> yes, we, we co-parent with God. God is the ultimate parent, our Father. And so the word that he gave me to encourage you today from his word is his faithfulness. And the God of I am who I am, who is full of promises that I will and I do, and I go before you. There are many promises in the word. Dive into the word if you're a parent and need encouragement. If you're an older parent and you need encouragement. If you're a younger parent and you need encouragement. It's not easy to be a parent today. We don't have the support of our society, as many know. So dive into his word. I am who I am. I will. Um, I will go before you. God is faithful. Okay? He's faithful to honor the sacrifice of being a parent. He's faithful to fill in the gaps we co-parent with God. He parents us, we parent, he parents our children. Don't be afraid of releasing control. I think that has been my journey, uh, um, 
releasing control. And today, just to give you an update on our children, um, we now have three. As Nelson said, our youngest was, was made in Brazil. Um, that's Daniel. <laughs> He's now 16, going on 17. Um, and going to, I homeschooled him for a while, and now he's going to Claremont High School and doing well. Um, he's very involved in church and in the youth and worship. He's quite the musician, Danny. Um, he got all that from Brazil, not from us. Um, we have our oldest daughter, who was six when we left, Gabriella. And as you can see, she got married last year. She uh, finished her uh, degree in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, which was God's uh, design for her. And as some of you have heard me say before, her desire is to use architecture, um, bringing beauty and justice and goodness through architecture into cities um, to, to minister to the poor. And so she graduated, got married in the Netherlands, and they're in two weeks moving to Canada where she'll do her internship uh, to be certified as an architect. She still has that desire to bring beauty, truth, and goodness to cities through architecture. And Luke, our middle son, who was five when we left, um, he's in Victoria. He just graduated. Um, he has a civil engineering uh, formation and um, played his last game of soccer. That also came from Brazil. <laughs> I didn't know be these gaps got filled in, but um, he finished his last game with the Uvic Bikes as a soccer player. Uh, he's doing well. We praise God for um, how God orchestrated their journey and brought mm -hmm. them today to where they are. So the word I, I will, I had a couple verses, but just one. Um, that I think sums it all up before I start preaching, right, Nelson? <laughs> he who calls you is faithful, and that comes from uh, 1 Thessalonians um, 5.24. He who calls you is faithful. So may you be encouraged by God's faithfulness and his promises in his word. Dive in. It's full of promises. God bless you. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, God is faithful. He has been faithful to us. He has been faithful to you. He will always be faithful. It is the great I am. And interesting that word that Lisa used uh, when Jesus, when God reveals that name to Moses, I am who I am. I remember going to uh, seminary in Winnipeg and Dr. Gus Kanko, professor of Old Testament, used to remind us that verb I am is actually in the Hebrew, the tetragram, is the word Jehovah, yeah. Um, yeah. and it is an atemporal verb, doesn't have a time, we translate as I am who I am, but it could be I was who I am, I am who will be, I will be who I was, you can do whatever you want, to which means that he is always the same, yesterday, today, forever, right? So that's our God, it is, that's our God, that's uh, that's who we follow, that the God that we have trust our lives into his hands. And uh, our mission in Brazil since 2004 actually changed a little bit. In 2004, we, we went to work with a Bible school. So it was missionary training. Brazil was sending many missionaries. Many of them were coming back hurt, broken. And they identified in Brazil the lack of training of missionaries as one of the great needs. Uh, to tackle that attrition, missionaries coming back. So we went to help with missionary training in Recife for seven years. And then after seven years, our mission has been to help equip the church to be an effective agent of transformation in the lives of individuals, in community, and society. The church in Brazil is growing, has been growing for decades, actually. At the same time that's happening, you look to the social indicators, and they seem to be going the other way crime, violence, and so on and so forth, right? So what's, what is happening here? So the church is saying, well, can this gospel that transformed me as an individual actually does, there is any power left to also change my community and my nation? Yeah. And the answer is, yes, of course. God never plans something that is just reduced to one aspect of transformation. 
we like to talk about individuals being transformed, and that's part of our mission. But God is transforming communities. God is transforming nations. When he gave us those principles from creation, he gave us principles for individuals to flourish and for nations to flourish, for society to flourish. If society walks in God's principles, those principles, the truth of God, apply to individuals and community and society, make individuals and society flourish. So our, our mission became then to help equip the church to be an effective agent of transformation in the lives of individuals, in their communities, and in society. And then um, uh, we do that uh, by, uh, by um, uh, that was my trip to Brazil last year after COVID, my first trip to Brazil. During COVID, I could not go to Brazil. Some, uh, sometimes there was a lockdown here, sometimes there was a lockdown there. Traveling was very difficult, as you know. So in October, a year ago, I was able to go back to Brazil. Actually, I was supposed to be in Brazil in March 2020, Right in, in one week before the United Nations declared the pandemic, so United Airlines canceled flights, so I couldn't go to Brazil until October last year. My dad actually passed away in May 2020 with COVID in Brazil. I couldn't go there because the city was in lockdown in Brazil. So that was my first trip back to Brazil after the pandemic, and as you see, as you can see, uh, being back to work with our partners in Brazil and. There are different churches and organizations that we network with in Brazil, bringing this uh, training and equipping for uh, community and transformation of individuals, community, and society. One of the big, if the next slide, Stephen, uh, by the way, thank you, Stephen, for your mm -hmm. help. Every time I come here, I need peace. So. <laughs> uh, one of the big, uh, uh, um, items that we developed in Brazil was this Coronel Basics online course, which pretty much uh, is going to talk about these teachings of how the truth of the gospel, the truth of God in the Bible, is actually relevant to transform communities and society and individuals. So we put uh, we we made this course available right a year before COVID. Actually, a year later we had 500 students accessing doing the course. It's a 10 module. It's a no formal model of education. 10 modules with some application. So we had 500 students after um, one year. When COVID came, a lot of people went to Zoom and online. This just took off. Uh, it had me there. I, I didn't plan like that. I didn't even know a pandemic was coming. But it just took off. And so students start to access the course. We had to, we still have to do follow up and, and many churches and organizations. And then not only that, but we had planned that for Brazil, in Portuguese, of course, we speak Portuguese in Brazil. I know that a lot of people in, in North America think that speak Spanish in Brazil. I, met a, I have met a, a lot of people, so be careful when you talk to me in Spanish. <laughs> actually, I understand Spanish because Portuguese is so close, so I actually try to speak Spanish when people do that. Um, but, uh, so we thought about Brazil when we translated that course. But then, God is always, God's plans are always expensive, right? way more than we can ask for dream. So people in Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde, Portugal, all Portuguese-speaking countries, we start to see students because we can, we have the access to people who access. We have, we know uh, uh, who is accessing. So we start to see these people accessing this course. So uh, in the next slide, uh, José Dalla is an evangelist in Angola who took the course and now he's spreading these teachings to his church and, and network in Angola. Um, I was just in, in Ethiopia, I just came back last week, one week ago I came back from Ethiopia, and I was there for the next slide, it's for the uh, Disciple Nations Alliance Global Forum. Uh, the Disciple Nation Alliance is our platform. We are POC missionaries, uh, but we work with the Disciple Nations Alliance. It's, uh, it's an organization that gathers organ other organizations, other churches worldwide. We work with them. They have the Global Forum every two years. We, we hadn't had one because of COVID, so this year, I just finished last week, I was in Ethiopia for the Global Forum, and Hita Mambasso from Mozambique, we sponsored her to come to the forum. She was there and she's the one who took the course also. So I'm in contact with these people in different countries, in Portuguese, who are taking this course and seeing these messages bring transformation to their 
churches and uh, to their communities, to individuals, to communities, to society. So there has been a great spread of these messages. Uh, by the way, my trip to Ethiopia, Pastor Ralph asked me about my trip to Ethiopia. I just came back a week ago. I, I was supposed to be in two countries, Mozambique uh, and Ethiopia. Uh, that was my fourth time in Mozambique, but the last time had been 17 years ago. So I left Victoria on the 5th of October, took the ferry to Vancouver, got a flight to London, changed planes to Doha, Qatar, changed planes to Maputo, Mozambique. <laughs> Got to Maputo, Mozambique, and they looked at my letter of invitation and they saw regional training. I was, I was going there to teach, like I had done the other times that I went. They said, oh, you're coming for work. You need a business visa. Oh. We don't give business visas at the airport, no. which I had done before, right? Like when they visited it. You have to leave the country. Pretty much there was no communication. There was no court of appeal. There was no possibility, no provision. I had to find my next flight out of Mozambique. So I spent five hours in the airport in Mozambique. Yeah. Had to leave. And they want me to go back to Qatar and to Canada. I said, no, no, I have a conference in Ethiopia in a week. So anyway, they allowed me to go to Ethiopia Airlines, buy a new ticket, uh, and fly to Ethiopia. Now I didn't have a visa to Ethiopia because my visa was one week later. So I had to resolve that with the Ethiopia. I had to spend the night at the airport to wait for the immigration supervisor to decide about my situation in the morning. So they decide, yes, we can have a visa, I stay. So after 58 hours, I was leaving the airport in Addis Ababa, not being able to enter Mozambique. And I said, Lord Jesus, what are you doing here? I cannot see a purpose in all this. <laughs> but we, we, we know that God orchestrates everything, right? Um, and there are people praying, I know that Pastor, I'll thank you for the prayers. And so then I, on Saturday, I finally left the airport in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. On Monday, the bishop that had invited me to come and teach, I had sent my handouts to him to be printed so that we could use with the people. He, he sent me a message, Nelson, I saw your, your what the material you're gonna teach. Can I teach a couple of those sessions? I said, Sure. So I met with him on Zoom, uh, went over the material, and when we go with the DNA to do those teachings, we always want to raise local champions to spread this mess. We coming, but we are not there to stay. We want to raise local champions. That's, that's what has happened, happened in Brazil, wherever we go. So here is God. If I had gone, I would be a new face, foreigner. They had never met me. I would be speaking the same language, Portuguese. But they had never met me. I would have to work on all these issues of trust and gain the trust and so, everything that we do. So God raised the best champion, the bishop himself, who is the bishop of the region, actually. And now he's in contact with me. I have other resources that I'm going to be doing follow-up with. And God raised the best champion. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that I don't see everything you do. <laughs> and I see a reason now for not being there myself but you have raised the bishop himself to the teaching. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your prayers. God is working every day. God is doing something new every day, mm -hmm. including my life yeah. and in your life. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that was my trip to Ethiopia. And then I, I went to the Global Forum, which was a great forum, and I just came back last week, 10 hours ahead, so I'm still, if I sleep here, uh, uh, actually, the week has that helped, helped already. So that's that's our outside in Brazil. Uh, we still doing our work in Brazil. The next the next slide will show that uh, the first community, poor community. We work with poor communities, uh, bringing transformation to community, equipping those families and kids to be agents of transformation in their own communities based on God's truth. God's truth generates transformation. It's not us. It's not the material resources that you put into the community, first, first and foremost. It is God's truth, first and foremost, that brings transformation to a community. Ideas have consequences. When people start to believe and to live out the truth of God, God's truth is powerful to transform their lives, and then they became agents for the transformation of their own community, and they believe also their nation. So, so that's, our, that's Villa Feliz, the first uh, community where we started. That team was built with 
funds coming from partners in Canada. It's, it, it has been a great addition to that community. And so from there it became national. The next slide shows CADI, the Center for Assistance and Holistic Development. I sit on the board of CADI now. CADI is, is spread in many different communities in Brazil. Um, last year, that's not what we usually do. We work with development. We want to equip, equip them, help them to help themselves. We, have, we are prepared for assistance if it's necessary, but that's not our goal because, especially in that region of Brazil, the northeastern region, poorest region in Brazil, uh, many, even many of the government pro programs has become just that assistentialism. You give, they receive, and they, they get addicted to receiving. That doesn't take them anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we work with development, but we're ready for assistance. So this kid from Kaji is saying, what have you given thanks for today? We're giving thanks for you. And he's talking to the Canadian, to the donors, because last year there was a situation, the next slide shows, there was a flood in one of the uh, states where one of our projects are, one of the communities who help. And we were able to do relief aid in the community of Kaibu. Uh, many families, including pastor, uh, the pastor is the leader of the, the Adriano, who is the leader of the, sorry, Pastor Ivaldo, who is the leader of that community. He lost his house. The house was totally flooded. Um, and many families, so we were able to help them with relief. So we're ready to do that, even though that's not our focus. Our focus is development. Thanks for Canadian donations that uh, made, us, made it possible for us to help. So um, you can jump to the next slide, uh, Stephen. We are always looking for new partners. These are this art group of architects who are building mm -hmm. uh, affordable houses in poor communities. We come and equip them for transformation, kind of give a framework for what they're doing. This is why you're doing. And then we go to the Bible and truth of God. That's what is generating. Uh, the next slide. Uh, uh, this is our newest project. Uh, we are developing curriculum also, not only because part of it is, transform is transformation of community, but we believe that God's truth transforms society too. So we are uh, teaching, equipping young professionals to say your vocation, your professional vocation is actually part of a, your, your vocation with small v is part of a vocation with capital V. Your vocation, capital V, is the advancement of the kingdom of God. God wants to transform society. God wants to transform nations also. And through your profession, if you're an engineer, like my son who was part of this course, like, well, that's my background too actually, uh, you are bringing the order of the kingdom to a society. You are building systems that uh, help life to flourish in a community, in a city, in a society. So you need to see that connected to God and His truth because God, from creation, establishes an order. He establishes something that works, that makes life flourish, <coughs> that allows life to, to enjoy benefits. So, so we say to them, your vocation is under the big V vocation, the advancement of the kingdom of God. And the pillars of the kingdom we teach them are God's truth, God's goodness, God's beauty. So we are called to advance that kingdom um, through our vocation also. So, and then we have other curriculum, curricula that we have developed. The next slide, uh, we developed this uh, curriculum for, for youth, made to flourish a beautiful map for youth uh, toward an expensive, expensive horizon. So it's, it's trying to give framework to youth to say your life has a purpose, has meaning, has significance in God, has a purpose. And then we try to, we try to do that with youth. We have a prep course for a university that we have developed. And we are developing the discipleship curriculum for young professionals. So those are, are all tools to help the church, help equip the church to be an effective agent of transformation in the lives of individuals, community, and society. We have books in Brazil. The next slide shows that we continue to translate books, that other resource, that's the last book that we have translated in Brazil, why social justice, not biblical justice. Um, very, very relevant to these days. 
um, and has generated a lot of conversation actually that book. So, so back to our mission, the last slide. Um, God has called us to help equip the church to be an effective agent of transformation in the lives of individuals in their community and in society. And I want to leave you with a message in the last minutes that I have. And the message is this. When Jesus gave his last command to his disciples as he was about to leave earth, he gave us the Great Commission, what we call the Great Commission, right? Uh, Matthew 1, 28, the, verse, the version of Matthew, Matthew of the Great Commission, God says, go make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we, we, we Westerners live in a postmodern, post-Christian, yeah. post-truth, if you haven't heard about that yet. We live in a, okay, that, that's, that's a term actually that is very much defined in these, these times, post-truth society, right? Wow. Post-modern, post-Christian, post-truth society. Uh, we see the consequence of that. I mean, in the last, within the last 60 years, this cycle has totally turned. We are to, a to, totally secular society. If you look to the arts and media, if you look to the laws that are being passed, if you look to, the, to government and so on and so forth, we are a secular society. Yeah. What we used to be a Christian society, someone had already mentioned that today, here, uh, six years ago, in six years, this, the, the, the wheel has totally moved. We are a secular society, and we see the consequences in the newspapers every day, but they don't connect the consequence to the ideas, right? Uh, on the flip side, I'm saying these days, especially young people, things are so insane these days that truth is suddenly becoming an, an alternative again. Because you see the results of the ideas of 60 years ago and, and what has happened in the last 60 years. Um, Daryl Miller, uh, he is a part of the Disciple Nations Alliance, a friend, uh, actually co-founder of the DNA. He says, if the church does not disciple the culture, the culture will disciple the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Wow. Right? If we are not careful, we, we don't, unconsciously, we are discipled by our culture. Culture is a powerful force. We, we, we don't, it's an abstract concept, but it's a powerful force that we end up being discipled, especially if we are born and grow up in that culture. It's a powerful force. So it's a good time to go back and disciple our culture by teaching the whole, everything of God's story in the Bible. So that's what we're telling people. We're giving them the whole story of the Bible. God's truth generates transformation. And we are going back, and one of the things we're doing is we're connecting the Great Commission, Go Make Disciples, with the Cultural Commission. We're going back to creation. Uh, the, uh, we teach a biblical worldview. Creation, fall, redemption, consummation. If uh, you never thought this is the story of the Bible, this is the story of God in the Bible. Of course, we uh, very very used to tell people you are a sinner, you need Jesus. But the Bible doesn't start Genesis 3. <laughs> and it doesn't jump to the Gospels after Genesis 3. There is a whole story happening. So we say we need to look at the whole story, the truth of the Bible, because God has a plan for all of, of it. So we go back to creation and we tell people we are made in God's image, which has a lot of implications. One of them is that God creates man and woman to be his representative on earth. He's, he's the king, and he's establishing his kingdom based on truth and goodness and uh, beauty. But men, the man and the woman that he creates are his representative, his agents, his vice regents, if you will, will. And they are going to spread kingdom. They're going to spread the garden over the whole earth. They're going, to, they're going to create culture. We are culture makers. We are history makers. History is not what we read in the books. History is what you're doing today. With God, that's what it is. Because what happened in the past does not define us, especially if it's brokenness. So many of us are defined by our brokenness, but brokenness doesn't define us because God is a redeemer, and he redeems things. What the fall broke, the redemption, the cross, reverses, 
And then we go back to the creation and we go to back to the cultural commission and we see God calling us to be agents with him, co-agents, agents with him of transformation. That's what we say to the kids in poor communities. We say, you're not an object of manipulation and abuse. You're not the, you're not the subject of statistics and numbers and government programs. You are an agent. God created you to be an agent of transformation in your own community, in your family. So, so, so that's the cultural commission. And we, we try to connect those two and say, our mission is to make disciples by preaching the gospel and see individuals transformed. And it doesn't stop there. The truth of God is so powerful that we need to go back to creation and understand that God called us to govern with him, to rule. That's the word that's there, rule over, right? The words dominion, have dominion, govern. God calls us to work with him, under him, because he's the king of us. He's the center, under him to govern, to spread his kingdom. So that's the message that we are preaching these days, um, to say that you are an agent. Wherever God has positioned you, your mission with God is to preach the gospel and win others to Christ. And also, discipleship doesn't start when someone makes a decision for Christ. That's what I'm saying these days. <laughs> discipleship doesn't start when someone makes a, dis a decision for Christ. We are called to disciple people to be good Christians in the church, but we are called to disciple individuals and communities and nations to flourish because there was God's plan from the beginning in Genesis 1 28 when he gave us this mission of being his agents to spread his kingdom over all the earth so these days I'm saying our job really is to disciple individuals it's like Lisa says it's like kid about like being parents we disciple our kids before they make a decision, many of them, before they make a decision for Christ. Do you agree? A lot of our kids will make the decision later in life, when they reach their adult age. But we are discipling them. We're teaching principles for life to flourish to them. That's what I'm saying these days. Discipleship doesn't start when someone makes a decision for Christ. We start to disciple them to be Christians, yes. And we need to do that. But also, discipleship starts with even before people come to the church because we need to disciple people to be humans as God designed humans to be. And these days, the greatest danger, as Dr. Houston used to say to us at Regent College, the greatest danger that we face is not in humanity, it's a humanity. We have been robbed of what it means to be humans and we are getting used to it. And we need to disciple people to be humans. Some of them will come to Christ. The outcome is not in our control. And, and, and Christ becomes so natural actually, as we start to disciple people to be humans. Coming to Christ becomes so natural. Evangelism becomes so natural. But we need to understand that we disciple people to be humans even before they become Christians. And we also need to be disciple people to be good Christians. That's what we, the church is here. So that's the message that I want to leave with you. Where do we have agency today? In your family, in your marriage, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your nation. Where do you have agency today? God gave you agency. Right. Don't be defined by brokenness and by what happened in the past that brought you to this situation today. God is a redeemer. Yes. If you work with him, you have agency with him. And God is about the business of transformation. Amen. He transforms. Amen. God's truth transforms. So thank you, Pastor Ralph, Pastor Sue. Thank you, Highway Christian Fellowship, for your support to our mission. May God bless you. Today is the elections in Brazil. One of the most important elections in the last decades. I'm leaving here to go to Vancouver. The consulate, Brazilian consulate is there to vote because I have agency, um, and I want, I would, please pray for Brazil today, that the, that election can define a lot of things for that country. So I ask you today, as you remember Brazil, please, please pray for the nation. Thank you.